All right, hello everybody. Let's talk about some auto layout shortcuts that may be useful. I use these pretty much every day, so I thought they'd be helpful just to give you guys an idea of what's possible and what you might not be using that could speed up your workflow a little bit. So to start off, uh, you probably already know this, hopefully you do, but if you wanna add padding to all sides of an auto layout, you can just hold down Command on Mac and then bump up this value here. But you might not know that you can use Option plus Shift to drag these corners right here. Or you can hold down and click and then you know, type in whatever value you want. And you can also do this for opposing sides. So if you just hold Option and then select one of the sides, you can change the padding for opposing sides. So you'll see if I hold Option, I can select the opposing sides. And then you can just hold shift if you want to change just one side. Um, so yeah, padding is pretty robust. I know they made a couple updates recently that makes it a little bit more confusing. It used to just be that one box. Um, and one other thing that I wanted to mention in here is if you're familiar with CSS, you can also type in different values here to kind of change the padding however you'd like um, using commas. Um, and then yeah, so next up, if you are a right-handed user, you can just use the arrow keys as after you select in here to change the alignment. Um, I use this a lot just to kind of like quickly toggle between um, how I want things aligned. And then if you're a lefty, you can use ASDW um, on the left side of your keyboard and it does the same thing. Um, so if you have um, a couple objects inside your auto layout and you want to set them to be spaced between, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Probably the fastest one that I use the most is just clicking in here and then pressing backspace and then enter and that will set it to space between. You can also come in here and press auto and that'll do the same thing. Or if you were doing like I showed you before, if you're messing with the alignment a little bit, you can then just press X and that will allow you to toggle between space between or packed. Um, so for this, if we have an object in here, let's say I'm making this form field. Um, if you want to set something to fill the container, let's say I have these other objects in here and I want them to fill the container, I can just double click holding option and it will fill my container for me. So I have um, a little bit of an issue there with that, but um, you can see at least the container, if you hold option and double click, it should fill the container. Um, this might just be some issue with my uh, component itself, but you get the idea. If you have an object, hold option, it should fill the container. And the same thing applies for if I have a couple objects in here, let's say I have some objects that are smaller, um, I can just double click without clicking anything else, you can just double click and it'll automatically hug the contents. So in this case, I would need to set these to uh, fill again or the same size. But if I have, you know, whatever my container is, if it's fixed and bigger than my contents, just double click and it will hug the contents. Um, so something I use very frequently is um, just using the return key on Mac and then tab. This is super helpful when you have um, a bigger design with a lot of nested auto layouts. It's really easy to drill in and out and kind of see what's buried within these containers. And then once you're inside, so just press enter, and then once you're inside, you can press tab to tab around. And then now I've found another thing. I can press enter again and tab around to see which containers live within that container. So that's just a super useful way to navigate. And then once I've drilled in, I can press shift plus return to come back out. Um, so if I have something that I want to add into an auto layout, um, you might already know about absolute positioning, but if you don't, it's this little option up here in the corner. We can add that. And now what's nice is that we can apply constraints just like any other frame. So let's say I have this container that I've added this little camouflage to. Now I can set whatever constraints I want. So in this case, I'd probably want this to scale with my container. So I want it to be 
left and right, top and bottom. So now as I go out to my main container, you'll see that that container that is absolutely positioned will scale with my content, which is super useful. Um, next up is something I run into pretty frequently, um, and this is a good example of it, is if I'm building a form with auto layout, which is really nice and adaptable because I can quickly change the order of things and it's just like the most flexible way of making uh, form. Um, one of the problems that might come up is if I have a drop down like I do here, it's kind of getting distorted here and, and hiding behind my content. So if I select the container that holds these um, input options, I can just quickly change the stacking order. So right now I have last on top, I can put first on top, and then that will bring these elements that I have here to the front. So now this will lay on top of the items below it. Um, and then the last thing that you might not know, but um, I use this quite a lot as well, is negative values um, for my auto layouts. So if I need something to overlay, I can add a negative value. Um, this wasn't always the case with auto layouts, so they've added this not super recently, but fairly recently. Um, and then like I showed you just now, you can change the stacking order. So if I want this icon to be first, I can simply change it to first on top, or if I want the last to be on top, I can change it just like that. I hope you guys found this useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.